Have you ever wanted to learn Linux? If you've watched this channel before, you probably have noticed that in a lot of my videos, I use the Linux terminal a lot, running a bunch of different Linux commands and different Linux tools to do whatever I'm trying to do in that video. And if you're not very familiar with Linux, then some of that can be pretty confusing. So I wanted to make this video to give sort of a brief overview of kind of how to use Linux. And when I was trying to figure out how to actually structure this video, I came across this Linux fundamentals module from TryHackMe. I've made videos about TryHackMe before for, and they always do a good job of making sure everything is very beginner friendly and explains everything really well. So I thought I might as well just go through all of the points in this Linux fundamentals module. And this is actually one of the rooms that are completely free on TryHackMe. So if anyone would like to follow along with me and go through all the steps as I'm doing them in the video, you can check the description down below and I'll have a link to it. So with all that being said, Let's get started. So the first thing that they go over is just sort of some basic background of what Linux is and how it's used. Personally, I don't think this is that important unless you're just like a history buff and wanna learn like the history of computing or whatever. But one kind of important thing to know is there are a lot of different flavors of Linux. If you're used to Windows or Mac, you can pretty much guess that if you know how to use one Windows computer, as long as it's not like a different operating system, like going from Windows 7 to Windows 11 or whatever, pretty much if you go from one Windows computer to the next Windows computer, everything's gonna be basically the same. And the same can be said for Mac OS, but there are lots of different flavors of Linux and a lot of them have slight differences. But a lot of the most common flavors that you see, like Ubuntu or Kali Linux, which I've used a lot on this channel, or Parrot OS, a lot of those are Debian based, which means they have a lot of the same commands and same sort of structure and all those kind of things. So if you learn how to use Ubuntu or Kali or any of those other Debian based versions of Linux, then a lot of those skills and that knowledge that you have from those versions will transfer to other Debian based versions. And the machine that we're going to be working with for this little series is going to be an Ubuntu machine. And the first question it asks is what year was the first release of a Linux operating system? I don't know this off the top of my head, so I'm just going to have to Google it. And according to Wikipedia, it is 1956. And it turns out that Wikipedia lied to me because that is not correct. <laughs> okay, so maybe that was actually the first actual computer and not the first Linux operating system. Because according to this Wikipedia entry, it is 1991. And honestly, that makes a lot more sense. 1956 was a really long time ago. So now let's try 1991. And that is correct. Okay, now we can move on. So now we can actually start interacting with a computer. And TryHackMe offers these in-browser machines that you can interact with when dealing with these little challenges and rooms and stuff. I believe there's a time limit of how much time per day you can use these in-browser machines if you're a free user. But if you sign up for a paid account, then you get unlimited access. But I'm just gonna go ahead and start the machine and then we can actually start interacting with our Linux machine. So that took a few minutes to launch, but eventually my Linux machine launched in the browser Browser, and now I have this nice little split screen view that is pretty convenient. And now I've deployed my first Linux machine so I can complete that task and move on to the next section. And now I can finally start running commands from the Linux terminal. And the first command that we're going to talk about is echo. Echo is a very simple command that takes whatever text you give it and just echoes it back to you in the output of the terminal. For example, if I run echo core secure, it just prints core secure back out to the terminal. And the first question it asks us is if we wanted to output the text try hack me, what would our command be? Well, we can just try that on our machine over on the right side. Just like we echoed core secure, we can now echo try hack me. And when we run that, it outputs try hack me to the terminal. So what would the command be to output the text try hack me? We just did it and it was echo try hack me. And actually when I tried to do that with the quotes like we just did a minute ago, it said that wasn't accepted because it was looking for it without quotes. The quotes aren't really necessary, but I usually do just because that preserves any white space or anything that might be in the string you're trying to echo. But the actual answer they were looking for is just echo try hack me without quotes. The next command we're gonna talk about is who am I? This can be a really useful command in the security world. If you access a server through like a reverse shell that you uploaded through a web application or something like that, you wanna know when you access it, are you accessing it from the perspective of an admin user or a guest user or maybe a specific user that was created for that web service. So this who am I command can be very useful depending on what you're trying to do. And when we run that command, it just tells us the name of the user that we're currently logged in as. And in this case, it is try hack me. And that was the question they asked. What is the username that you're logged into on the deployed Linux machine? Try hack me. 
And now we can move on to interacting with the file system. And here we're going to cover a few different commands that are incredibly valuable for being able to use a Linux terminal. The first command is going to be ls. And this command just lists all the contents in the current directory where we are. And it doesn't really go into it here, but there are a lot of different things you can do with ls. For example, you can do ls-a. And you might notice a bunch of these files that did not show up the first time we ran it are now appearing. And all these files have a dot at the beginning of it. And that means Means that they are hidden files. But if we run ls-a, that also shows us all the hidden files as well as the ones we would normally see. ls-l is also another really useful one. It tells us a lot of other information about the files and directories that we're looking at, like the timestamp on them or the size of the file. And it also tells us the permissions, like whether or not we can read it or write it or execute it. So ls-l can be very useful. And the first question they ask in this section is on the Linux machine that you deploy, how many folders are there? And we can see from the output of ls that there's folder one, two, three, and four. So there are four folders. Now the next command we're going to talk about is cd, which stands for change directory. For example, if we wanted to check out the contents of folder one, we can just do cd folder one. And then we can use ls again to see the contents of that folder. And in this case, there's nothing in it. And we can just back up to our home directory by running cd again and dot dot which means wherever we are in the file tree, we're gonna back up one layer. And now I wanna check folder two, so cd into folder two, run ls again, still nothing. And this time, instead of backing up one layer and then going back forward again into folder three, I'm gonna kinda of do a little bit of a shortcut. I'm gonna do cd dot dot slash folder three. So you can give cd full file paths, telling it wherever you want it to go. No matter how many layers of the file tree it has to traverse to get there, it will take that file path and go wherever that is. And again, running ls in folder three, there's nothing there. And once again, I'm going to cd into folder four. And finally, we find this note.txt file. And the question is which directory contains a file? and folder four was the only one that we found that had an actual file in it. Next, we need to figure out how to access the contents of that file. And to do this, we're going to use the command cat. So if you've ever used things like notepad or any sort of word process or anything, you can use those kind of things in most Linux systems as well. You can use a text editor or some sort of program to open files and access the contents, but cat will actually take the contents of whatever file you give it and just spit it out to the terminal. So instead of having to open a whole other program, I can just run cat note.txt. And now we see that the contents of that note.txt file is hello world. So to answer the question, what is the contents of the file? Hello world. So the last question is use the cd command to navigate to this file and find out the new current working directory. So we're going to do this with the pwd command, which stands for print working directory. So this can be really useful if you're doing a lot of things in different directories throughout the file system. At some point, you might kind of get lost in the sauce and forget where you are and where you need to get to. So if at any point you don't know where you are in the file system, you can just run pwd and it will print the exact location where you are in the file tree, which in this case is slash home slash tryhackme slash folder four. And now we've answered all those questions and we can go on to the next section. The next section is about searching for files. If you've used any sort of computer for any amount of lengthy time, you've probably come across a situation where you need to find a certain file or you put something somewhere in your hard drive and you don't remember where it was and you need the ability to search for it. Well, Linux has a few built-in options for this. The first one is simply called find. And if we just want to find something specifically by the name of the file, we can just run find dash name and then the name we're looking for. For example, we want to try to find that note.txt and it tells us exactly where it is. It happens to be in the same directory where we already are, so it's pretty easy to find, but still, you get the idea. It also allows you to use wildcards. For example, if we run find-name and then star.txt, it would return all of the txt files in the whole file system. And another really useful searching tool is grep. While find is very useful for finding a certain file, grep is really useful for finding something inside of files. And the question they ask us is use grep on access.log, which is this file that was in our original home directory. And we need to find a flag that has a prefix of THM. So we can do this by running grep and then the string that we're looking for, which is THM, and then the name of that access.log file. And it returns the line of text from that file that includes that string that we searched for. We can see right here, THM access. And now we can move on to the next section. And next is an introduction to shell operators. 
So there are a lot of different operators available. For example, this ampersand operator, this actually lets something run in the background. For example, if you have like a command, like a bash script or something that you want to run in the background while you're doing other things, but you don't want it to be filling up your terminal with like logs and stuff, you can just run the command you want to run and then put an ampersand at the end and it'll background that process. And that happens to be the answer to the first question they have in this section. If we wanted to run a command in the background, what operator would we use? And that is an ampersand. There's also a double ampersand operator, which you would think would be similar to the ampersand, but it actually lets you run multiple commands in a row. The example it gives right here is say you want to run command one and then command two. You could run command one ampersand ampersand command two and just hit enter one time on the keyboard and you would run both commands. But the next two operators we're gonna talk about are ones that I actually use a lot and these are used to redirect output. So if you wanted to run a command and it output a bunch of text to the screen, you don't wanna risk your computer turning off or you just losing that output for whatever reason. Instead of having to go through all that manual work of copy and pasting that into a file where you can save it, you can actually use this little angle bracket operator to directly take what whatever is output from a command and send it directly into an output file. For example, if I wanted to echo the string subscribe to Core Secure, but I don't want to forget about that text, I want to keep it and save it in a file, I can just use that output redirect operator and save that output into a file called subscribe.txt. And now if I cat subscribe.txt, we see the output of that command that I just ran. And if that file already had something in it, that redirection operator actually replaces everything in that file. For example, if I echoed like the video and then sent that to that same file that I just made, now when I echo that file, all that's in the file is like the video. But this next operator with two angle brackets actually appends whatever is in that file. So right now that file contains the string of text like the video, but if I wanted to add the text and also subscribe and I use two angle bracket operators, now when I cat that file, now I see like the video and also subscribe. So it took what was already in that file and then added more text to the end of it. And so the next question is, if I wanted to replace the contents of a file named passwords with the word password123, what would my command be? So because we want to overwrite the contents of that file and not append to the end of it, we would only use one single angle bracket to replace that contents. So we're gonna echo the password123, which is the word we want to put in the file, use the angle bracket to push the output of that command to the name of the file that we're trying to update. And the next question is, now if I wanted to add try hack me to this file named passwords, but also keep passwords123, since we're trying to append instead of replace the contents of that file this time, we're going to use two angle brackets. So echo try hack me, which is the word we want to add to the file, two angle brackets to append, and then the name of that file. So that's pretty much it for this whole module. But if you didn't know how to use a Linux terminal before and didn't know many commands, now you know how to move around a file system, how to list the files in a directory, how to find your working directory, how to search for file names in the file system, how to search for specific text inside of a file, how to take output from a command and send that output to a new file, how to take an existing file and then append output from a command to the end of that file that already exists, and you also know how to output the contents of a file to the terminal. And if you were a beginner before watching this video, I hope that all these new tools will help you feel more confident about using Linux going forward. Now there is a part two to this series that adds more commands and goes into more depth on some different things, but that one isn't free to access, so you will have to have a paid membership to Try Hack Me to actually do anything with it. But if anyone is interested in accessing more of these things from Try Hack Me under the paid tier, I do have a referral link down below that will give you a $5 credit if you sign up with it. That's going to be about it for this video. Just one more thing before I go, and I really hate doing this, it feels weird to me, but I am getting close to 5,000 subscribers and I would really like to hit 5,000 before the end of the month. But if you like this video and got some sort of value out of it, and you want to see more videos about like hacking and security and different sort of tech tutorial type things, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. It would help me out a lot. And if you're interested in learning more about Linux, I've actually started making a whole series of YouTube shorts covering Linux commands, and you can see a whole playlist of all those shorts right here.